Hello and welcome back to our data structures and algorithms series. In this video, we dive into one of the most fundamental data structures, arrays. Arrays are actually the most used data structures. Arrays are building blocks for data organization and manipulation in programming. They're just like the shelves in a library or this box here that is used to store these biscuits. So in organizing information in a way that is easy to find and use, arrays are very important data structures. So in this particular video, we are going to explore everything that you need to know about arrays from their definition, advantages, and how to use them in different programming scenarios uh, using Python. So what is an array? What is an array? An array is actually a variable, but it's a special type of variable. Remember, a variable is a container that holds data, and that data is stored in memory. So the special thing about an array is that an array will hold multiple data, unlike the normal variables. As you can see, this tray of eggs here. It's not just holding one egg, but many, many eggs. So that is what an array uh, gives you, gives you that capability. For example, if you needed to uh, uh, create a variable to hold the different brand of cars, instead of creating a variable for each brand, you can simply create a single variable called an array, which will store the different brand names for the different cars. So an array is actually a variable. And as mentioned, it's actually a data structures. Imagine you having to store eggs without a tray. It becomes very delicate to store them and very delicate to actually pull out eggs from wherever you're storing them and to use them. So it is a variable, special type of variable, and it's a data structure. Now, just like this tray of eggs, we're just storing eggs here. So arrays store data of similar types. So same data uh, type. So if we are storing integers, then integers only. If we are storing uh, strings, then strings only. Another thing to note is that arrays store uh, their elements or values in contiguous memory locations. That means that when you're storing value, values in arrays, they occupy spaces next to each other in memory. So you have one egg, then the next egg, then the next egg, then the next egg in continuous memory locations. Eh? Another thing that you need to understand about arrays is that every position where it stores a data element, element is called an index called an index and arrays can be zero best index meaning the very first element in that array begins at index number zero eh? or it can be negative best or positive best negative best means that the index of the first position uh, of the array actually is a negative number positive then it's a number above zero for example we're starting at one so the most commonly used in programming is actually zero best index. We normally use zero. So the first element, for example, here, this particular egg, if this is the top of the array, then this is index number zero. Uh, okay, so just as a reminder, you remember we looked into different types of data structures, and it's important that we remember where arrays lie. So data structures, they can be primitive, meaning they are user-defined, uh, they're, they're actually system-defined, or they can be non-primitive, meaning we are the ones who've defined them. Now, under non-primitive, we have linear data structures and non-linear. So as you've seen, an array from the previous picture is actually a linear data structure because the elements that are stored inside it are following each other. So we can be able to move from one element to the next, to the next to the next 
uh, in a linear way so that's why we call it linear uh, another thing about arrays is that they are static so we call them static they uh, uh, an unprimitive linear data structure can be static or dynamic so we call an array static because just like the tray of eggs if it can only hold 16 eggs once it's full it's full we cannot expand it so that is what static means so that is where an array really lies so an array is a non-primitive linear static data structure it's important to remember that okay now these are the properties of an array just like this box of uh, chocolate biscuits here now you can see that of course elements or the biscuits are actually organized uh, one after another and you can see that they're all chocolate biscuits so they're the same type of biscuit and you can see of course that we, we have a fixed size because uh, we cannot add any more biscuit in this particular box eh? uh, and the elements of course as i said are following each other eh? okay so uh, an array also has similar properties to this box of chocolate biscuits so uh, uh, whatever we store inside the array they are called array elements so these are the array elements for example this array has number five eight two etc etc and they are all of the same type which is integers eh? then each position of an array is called an array index so the very first position where we've stored number five is index number zero where we've stored number eight is index number one and so on and so forth eh? the other important property of an array that you're supposed to understand is the size of the array so the number of elements we have in the array is called the array size or also commonly referred to as an array length so the array length of this particular array here is actually eight because we've stored eight numbers in this particular array now to be clear uh arrays store data of the same data type and the elements occupy contiguous memory locations and each element has the same size and that particular size might vary by the way it's important that i mention that that size might vary in from one uh, it might vary from one programming language to another uh, but most of the time and also depending on the data type that you're creating uh, but most of the time it might be four bytes so that means that this particular space in memory is actually four bytes yeah. the next space is also four bytes so if you want to find the total amount of memory that your array is using you can multiply depending on the data type again uh, four multiplied by the array length or size eh? okay then we have the index which is used to define the location so the location of the elements and number two it's also used to access the elements randomly eh, in the array so for example if we want to access number five here we can simply access this index number three if we want to access 16 we can simply access index number five so we can be able to access the elements that have been stored in an array using the index of that particular array so i hope that is clear and most importantly it has a fixed size fixed size so that's why we call it a static data structure so once we've declared an array uh, we cannot be able to expand its size uh, uh, during runtime so why are arrays important why are arrays important now arrays offer efficient data storage and access when you talk of efficiency remember we're talking about the time complexity so when you talk of efficient uh, for example if you access the value of an array using an index it's, it's just an o of one time complexity which is very 
efficient compared to other data structures that we are going to to meet now arrays are also foundations they offer foundations for other data structures what this means is that uh, we are going for example to create linked lists and for you to implement linked lists you're going to use arrays also tree data structures can be implemented using arrays arrays also facilitate algorithms implementations especially search and sorting algorithms so search and sort algorithms are implemented using arrays because it's very easy to manipulate data that are inside arrays arrays are also uh, uh, known for their ability to hold huge amount of data especially mathematical data and it's quite easy to perform mathematical operations like matrices and other algebraic functions uh, when data has been stored inside arrays so really that is the other uh, importance of arrays now here let's understand how is an array how is an array stored in memory and by memory we are talking of the ram for example uh, so how 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 is it stored there so assume that this is the memory of course the memory normally has uh, several locations which are numbered and that particular number we call it a memory address so when you create an array just like the one we saw earlier what happens is that uh, those particular values of the array or elements of the array are actually stored one after the other in the memory just like as you can see in this particular animation so in the memory address the memory address will have numbers so for example here our very first element has been stored on memory address 1024 we are assuming that each of this uh, 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 value is taking four bytes so the next memory location will be plus four of that which is 1028 then 1032 etc etc and now the other thing you need to understand is that the very first memory address the very first memory address is called the base address so for example here the base address is 1024 now uh, this is important because in order to calculate in order to access the an element of an array we need to do some calculation and that particular cal calculation normally is uh, uh, done with the formula the base address then plus uh, then we take the uh, plus uh, we take the base ah that is the base address already so the base address which is 1024 plus uh, hey, I'm trying to oh plus the the size eh? so the size of each element the size of each element then times the index of that particular array so for example if we wanted to access five here uh, the element five how we do it is by doing 1024 then plus uh, the size which we've said is four bytes eh? so four bytes times the index uh actually it's supposed to be the index <laughs> it's supposed to be the index minus the index of the very first item so that if it's uh if it's zero like here it's zero so that is actually what i was forgetting eh? so uh let me let me just do that again so here it's actually su supposed to be index minus i cannot be able to edit this so it's supposed to be minus uh, the index minus the first index so that even if it's a negative index then it will be the index of that particular item minus minus maybe uh, negative two but here we are using zero best index so for zero best index 
you don't really even have to do the subtraction so if we do three times four then we get 12. if we add 12 plus 10 24 then of course we are going to get this memory address so that's how we are able to access this particular value by accessing its memory address through this particular formula okay so uh, that is done on an o of one o of one operation once we know the index we simply do the uh, uh, the calculation so that is a very fast uh, access because even if we have a million uh, items in this array we can access the a millionth element in just a snap of a finger okay so let's move on so here let's look into the different uh, types of arrays the first type of array is the one that we've been creating it's called a one-dimensional array just like this single row that we have here so with a one-dimensional array we normally have uh, with a 1d array we normally have the index for example start from zero then we are going to uh, maybe have one uh, sorry take that down a bit then this is two then maybe this is three then this is four then this is five so uh, the positions are just like that there's just one row for a 1d array and it's just like the examples we've been able to see eh? then we have two dimensional arrays now for two dimensional arrays uh, as you might have guessed of course we have uh, we have two sides so we have a zero we have a zero there then we have a one then we have a two then we have a three then we have a four then we have a five on the other hand so those are the rows we also have a column so zero uh and zero and one like that so if we want to access this particular egg then we should do so by accessing position zero zero if we want to access this one it will be zero one and so on and so forth so for example this one will be one zero this one if we want to access then we access it through the index one one etc etc so that is what we call a 2d a two-dimensional array then we have a three-dimensional array so a three-dimensional array is like a tray of eggs stuck together so of course we have the y-axis and uh, we have the z-axis we have the y-axis uh, we have that one and we have this one uh, so we have those three dimensions so again you can be able to label each one of them uh, using the indexing eh? okay uh, now this is important the array operations so for every data structure that we are going to learn henceforth we are going to be talking about their operations and these operations are important because they are the ones we'll be implementing during the practical so you must understand what each one of them means how to implement them using python and also uh, their time complexities eh? so the very first one is traverso so traverso is the operation that is used to access elements of an array so each element when we want to access them and maybe print them or even add them together that is what we call traverso insertion is when we want to add an element at a particular index of an array deletion is when we want to delete the value stored at a particular index when we search we are looking for a particular item in that particular array so when we find it we return it then updating is when we want to change the value that we've stored at a particular index in an array so those are the 
uh, uh, some of the operations that uh, are enabled uh, by default in uh, arrays. Okay. Okay, so let's try and think this out. You're allowed to pause if the timer is moving a bit fast. Okay, so the answer here is actually D. So sorting the elements of an array. Uh, and I will not explain this. So I want you to do some research and uh, uh, just put on the comments why this is not uh, enabled by default. Eh? Okay. Then we have array functions. Array functions. Now, uh, array functions enable us to perform certain operations on the array. For example, the append function, the append function helps us to be able to add an element at the end of an array. So that is append. Then we have uh, insert. The insert function helps us to insert an element at a specific index of an array. So we are going to be implementing these ones during the practical, which will be in our next video. Remove is used to remove the, for, the first occurrence of the first occurrence of the specified value so when we get the first occurrence of the value for example five then we delete it pop is used to uh, remove a specified value and uh, return the element at that given index if no index has been specified then it will remove the last element and return that particular element then you have index uh, then you give it a value so this one will normally return the the index of the first occurrence of that value then we have len then inside it you put the array name is used to return the size uh, the size of the array or the array length then sort is a function that is used to sort the list in the array in ascending order okay now these are the advantages and disadvantages of arrays so what the advantages should tell you is when to use arrays what the disadvantages should tell you is when not to use arrays eh? So we've already mentioned that anytime you have big amounts of data and you want fast access, then go for an array. If you want simplicity and ease of use in terms of even implementing search and sort algorithms, go for an array. If you want to be able uh, to do uh, what we call cache locality, you see the way we've said that uh, uh, the way we've said that the items in an array are stored in a contiguous memory location. So it becomes quite efficient to be able to access those items because they're just following each other. As you're going to see, uh, for example, in other uh, in other uh, data structures. We, we don't store values in contiguous memory locations. So it becomes quite, it takes some time to move on to the next location, eh? because most likely you're moving the, 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 the uh, you're moving to uh, another memory uh, location, which will also consume some time. Eh? On memory efficiency also, uh, on memory efficiency, uh, 
because uh i'm just trying to i'm just trying to remember what i was supposed to say here okay that, that one is escaping my mind that one is escaping my mind okay but please also understand that anytime you need memory efficiency you have an application that requires memory efficiency then an array is the data structure to to go for and as we said uh, earlier uh, arrays are used to implement other data structures and algorithms so it's important that you understand them uh, very well uh, if you need to expand your memory size during runtime then don't use an array uh, arrays are not very good or efficient when it comes to inserting values within the array or deleting values from the array eh? so we're going to see that these are actually of n operations eh? and if you want to if you want a data structure that will store data of different types then don't go for an array eh? okay then uh, arrays do not have support for high level operations like sorting so for that you will need to implement an algorithm so they don't have direct support for high level operations like sorting so normally you'll have to implement some algorithms for you to achieve that okay now this might not be very clear right now but during the practical we will be mentioning this again so that you can understand it better but uh, for now uh, just understand that when you're creating an array the time complexity is o of one and the space complexity of course depends on the number of items the size of the array so it will be o of n eh? inserting a value if you're inserting at the end of the array so that will be just an o of one because we will already know the index we can calculate the the memory location and just add uh, add the item so o of one but if you are inserting for example at the beginning uh, which is now the worst case it will be o of n so this is the best case at the end at the beginning it will be o of n so we will understand this in our next video i'll demonstrate why this is o of n okay so the rest of the space complexity is, is just O of 1. Eh? Only creating the array is O of N. So I'll just be focusing now on the time complexity. To access a value on a particular cell, we've seen how to calculate the memory address so that we can just access it in O of 1. Traversing an array, going through the items of an array, elements of an array, O of N. Searching is just like traversing, so O of N. Deleting a value, again, if it's at the end, O of 1. If it's at the beginning or the middle, then we'll need to shift some other items, so O of N. So this is the best case again. This is the worst case. Eh? Okay. Ah, great. So try this out. Feel free to pause if the timer is moving too fast for you. Okay, so in a single dimensional array of size n, what is the time complexity to access an element by index? So the correct answer here should be a o of 1. Okay, so I hope you got it right. Now, arrays have many applications. One of the common ones is actually database management. So if you've learned SQL, uh, or any other, other uh, database uh, management system and then you should know that when you retrieve values from the tables they're actually stored in arrays 
so database management systems use arrays because it's easy to uh, store data and also to sort and search data uh, in arrays so database management systems use arrays computer graphics whether 2d or 3d for example pictures will store uh, will store each pixel in in a 2d array uh, then videos for example will have three dimensions arrays are very good in numerical analysis and data analysis so that's why they are used even in machine learning because they are the only data structures that support a a fast math operations on large data sets on e-commerce websites uh, for example when they list the products and you can click next to move to the next product normally such data are actually stored in arrays and as we mentioned i've repeated this this is the third time arrays are important because they are used to build other data structures and they are used to implement uh, other search and sort algorithms so that is it for this particular topic we've been able to learn that an array is just a special type of variable that stores items of the same type we've also looked at some of the properties of an array for example they have a fixed size and uh, the elements are stored in contiguous memory locations array operations like uh, uh, insertion uh, deletion traversing etc and we've also looked at the time complexities of those particular operations so that is it for this video thank you so much for staying to the end in the next video we are going to get our hands dirty with python by implementing array operations the very fast uh, uh, the very fast lab we are going to do is the creation and insertion operations of arrays so thank you so much and see you in the next video bye bye